How's it going guys and geeks? Welcome to the Geek Critique Show. My name is Dakota and today we're going to be going into the Godzilla King of the Monsters trailer that was released last week at San Diego Comic-Con. And we're going to dive into each and every frame, examine everything and figure out what's going on in this movie. There may be spoilers here. There's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of uh, rumor that might be proven true in this trailer, but again, this is speculation. We don't want to ruin anything for anyone, but we are also going to be comparing what we see in the trailer to the viral marketing website Monarch Sciences that uh, is online now and you can check out, and, and I encourage you to check out as more is released before the movie's release. But we're going to talk about where all these monsters' origins are, where they are in the world, and where they're going to be going later in the film. Uh, as far as what we can see in this trailer and what we see on that website. So let's begin. We'll start this off. Okay. Oh, lightning in the distance. This is perfect. All right, so we see Millie Bobby Brown looking out into the distance. What she's looking for, we don't know at this point, but I'm going to have a guess that she's looking out at the waterline for Godzilla. She probably also realizes that something is coming. Why she is potentially expecting Godzilla we'll talk about later in the trailer but she's clearly in the know here she knows something's going on here she lowers the binoculars and realizes that the wind's pattern has changed I like how it just drops and then just changes direction immediately by the way Millie Bobby Brown is playing a character called Madison Russell uh, the character who is a daughter of certain monarch uh, employees we don't really know their position in Monarch yet, but we assume that they're higher ups in Monarch. And Monarch is the uh, company that, or the institution that is involved with tracking these large beasts or titans, as they're now calling them. We'll talk more about that later. So Millie Bobby Brown sees this flag. She also sees this storm just crescendoing over Boston. We can tell this is Boston because this is Fenway Park, a baseball field, very old field. We get better looks at it later on in the trailer. But notice the yellow lightning that you see all around her. This is a very unusual color for lightning. And we know that this is a color associated with the character of King Ghidorah. Or as I'm going to be shortening its name to Kikidora because that became somewhat of a meme in the comment section of our last video talking about Godzilla King of the Monsters. Why? Well, because Jen misheard me. I saw Rodan in there. I saw Mothra. Obviously, we saw uh, King Ghidorah. Um, but, what? King Ghidorah. <laughs> King Ghidorah. <laughs> Leave a like for King Ghidorah. But yeah, you can see that yellow lightning a little bit better right here. We'll talk more about King Ghidorah's powers later on. Here we have Millie Bobby Brown running back inside. Alright, so here we have what appears to be a Monarch base. Now Monarch also appears to be teaming up with the armed forces. Uh, we see in the background over here, but this is Bradley Whitford's character, Dr. Stanton. So here we see Vera Farmiga playing the character of Dr. Emma Russell, who is the mother to Millie Bobby Brown's Madison. This table here looks very high tech, and I, I, I'm assuming this is used to track all the different titans that are all over the world. We also see the back of Thomas Middleditch over here, as well as Aisha Hines over here. This character here, just left of center, may be Zhang Ziyi. There's Aisha Hines again. And just to the left here, we see Dr. Ishiro Serizawa, who we actually saw in the first Godzilla film. Let them fight. He was one of two main monarch individuals. We also have the other in this film, played by Sally Hawkins. The actor playing Ishiro is Ken Watanabe. Now, this is Madison's father in the film, played by Kyle Chandler. He's going to be playing a character called Mark Russell. Now, here's where things really start to get interesting. I mean, it's already pretty interesting, but it, this appears to be Atlantis to me. I mean... I know there is another movie in 2019 presenting us with Atlantis, but this appears to be an underwater civilization that appears ancient. And, you know, in common mythos, that would be Atlantis. And here we have Ken Watanabe's character, Shiro Serizawa, looking at what appears to be hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics detailing Godzilla very, very well. Even better than the humans in the uh, images. Uh, you could tell that they're worshipping him. And this is the scene that we hear that uh, these are titans. This is They're very ancient. The ancients uh, worshipped these individual monsters. Um, you could see some are prostrated, some are uh, showing obeisance. 
Here we get a better look at Thomas Middleditch's character here, as well as O'Shea Jackson Jr.'s character, who we know is Chief Warrant Officer Barnes. Uh, obviously, you could see that on his uh, U.S. Navy outfit. Notice that this patch here, it says Mythus Noster Pyxis, which in Latin means roughly our mythical box and i don't know what that means but i have a feeling that this is something it's a division of the military set to unearthing more about these creatures and keeping them in check uh kind of like keeping pandora's box in check so uh i think that's interesting i want to see more of what this badge actually is it looks like it could be two towers and a monster over uh, the city, I don't know. It, it's not clear currently. All right, so here's the character Mark Russell appearing to be in an underwater facility looking at Godzilla for the first time. What's cool about this is that Godzilla is lighting up here, but it appears to be benevolent. In the previous film, whenever he lit up, it was a very malevolent action. It was just before he used his atomic breath. But yeah, you could tell that this is an underwater facility in what appears to be a canyon. This doesn't look to be... Uh, a submarine at, at, at all. It even looks to be built into the, the, this face of a cave here. You could tell by the, the roof. Does Mark's character have some sort of connection with Godzilla? Perhaps. I don't know. Here's Middle Ditch's character again. Alright, so here we have Sally Hawkins' character, Dr. Vivian Graham. Uh, it looks like she's slightly fearful of the creature that she's looking at. We don't actually know if this is the exact same scene that they're looking at Godzilla, but it's cut to make it look that way. We see later in this trailer there are certain scenes that are cut to look certain ways, but they are not what they seem. Kinky Dora. Kinky Dora is here. We can tell it's Kinky Dora because boom, one head, Kinky Dora, two heads, Kinky Dora, three heads, Kinky Dora. We can also tell that it is trapped in ice. And it doesn't appear to have been in hibernation when it was trapped in ice because it does appear to be in action. It's, it appears to have been a, maybe some sort of flash freezing event. Uh, we see it's extremely tall. We can tell a little bit about its height based on the staircases over here. I count 21 flights of stairs, which roughly adds up to about 210 feet by OSHA standards. But seeing as how the scaffolding goes up literally twice that that height and the creature is hunched over, I'm, I'm assuming that it's it's near three times that amount. But we can actually look that up on this handy dandy website that they've uh, given us, Monarch Scientists. You can uh, look at it now. You can go. I, I have full clearance. Uh, if you want full clearance, uh, just use this code 251-720-614 when you get to monarchsciences.com. Uh, and you can check out three different locations. We're going to be touching upon them later in the video. But this first one, where is it? Oh, yeah, Antarctica. Outpost 32. Interesting that there are 32 outposts. Let's go into Monster Zero as it's being deemed, which could potentially mean that this is the very first Titan to have ever uh, been on this planet. We don't really know at this point why they're calling it Monster Zero. Now we do see here that it is uh, 521 feet tall, which is immense. It's almost one third or even one half larger than Godzilla was in the previous film. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what some of the details are. From the Hydra to the Rainbow Serpent, Myth was the compass that led us to the resting place of the Three-Headed Titan, a name unspoken through millennia of whispered nightmares, a living extinction event named the One Who Is Many. We call it Monster Zero. At a monarch containment facility deep in the frozen tundra of Antarctica, a three-headed winged serpent of ancient yet unknown origin lies frozen within a glacial tomb of ice. This is without question the largest superspecies ever discovered, easily dwarfing Godzilla at a height of over 500 feet tall. Cranial scans reveal a divergent frontal lobe density in the brains of the three heads, denoting each head has disparate levels of cognitive functions and possibly even independent thought. Now let's go to the civilian operative files. Monster Zero's dermal layer is gilded with trace amounts of aurum. Aurum is the Latin word for gold. So they don't say that here, but you know, if you look that up, yes, he will have a little bit of gold. He probably won't be entirely gold like he was 
in the Toho films. Metallurgical studies theorize the scales act as a conductor capable of carrying bioelectrical currents through the creature's body. Injuries have been discovered on several locations on the beast's body, reminiscent of claw and scorch marks. Exoforensics are currently investigating. And here we have a uh, thermal look at it. Muscle tendons on the wings are so hypertensile that their massive aerodynamics could generate hurricane force winds when in flight. Coupled with its body electroreceptor molecular biology capable of conducting electrical currents, water vapor in the air would be heated at extreme levels, creating its own localized form system as it travels. Simply put, if Monster Zero were to fly again, the stratosphere would be torn open by an otherworldly tempest of thunder and lightning our sky has never seen. Cryptolinguistics have analyzed translations of every worldwide case study of Monster Zero in the Monarch database across tens of thousands of years. The ancients called it Ghidorah, or Ghidra, or Kinky Dora. Leave a comment for Kinky Dora. Really quickly, while we're on this site, you can actually track the movements of Godzilla. It appears to be going to wherever this classified Monarch outpost is. Back to the trailer. This is really interesting. Notice that all three heads are facing the same direction. Also notice that the tail appears to be spiked and is aiming towards something, maybe to stab it. Also notice that there is a claw that doesn't appear to be from Kinky Dora because Kinky Dora does not have hands. Um, this is very interesting because we have heard that there will be a fifth monster in the film. We do not know who that will be at this point, if it will even be one of the Toho classics. I'm rooting for Gamera though, even though that's not Toho. We get our first look at Charles Dance right here. Many theorize that he will be playing uh, Tom Hiddleston's character from Kong Skull Island, but we all know he's just playing Taiwan. All right, this appears to be a flashback to the first film or the events of the first film and perhaps a different viewpoint. Perhaps the Russell family's viewpoint of the San Francisco uh, event where the Mutos attacked Godzilla and Godzilla in turn, you know, destroyed wrecked house. But we see the city in ruins. It almost looks like an earthquake, uh, like a very powerful earthquake went through here. But I doubt that they'll be going back to San Francisco to do more damage just because they have literally every city in the world to play with at this point. But you know, it wouldn't be out of character for Godzilla to repeatedly go to the same city and destroy it. Yeah, but I do believe that this is a flashback to 2014. Here we appear to have a cocoon. Uh, most likely this is Mothra's cocoon. Where this is, I'll explain in a little bit, but notice the large statues, the humanoid statues, in the corners of this shot. They're very clearly humanoid statues. You could see heads and shoulders and all that. This may be the same scene, maybe a little bit later, but this is clearly after Mothra breaks free of the cocoon and is in her larval state. Uh, you could see her little arms moving around right here. You can see that Millie Bobby Brown's Madison has some clear connection here. Emma, her mother, clearly wants her to get away from the beast uh, for obvious reasons. You know, it's 100 feet tall. But it does appear that they have some sort of connection whether that be a psychic link, uh, a, a literal she can hear the uh, Mothra speaking uh, link, I don't know. Will she be replacing the Mothra fairies? I don't know. Uh, in our trailer reaction, I mistakenly, yes, I mistakenly, I make mistakes, mistakenly called that, I, I called this Gamera. It does have, it does appear to be turtle-like in shape. We don't see the full larval form of Mothra at this point, um, but yeah. It's, it's definitely Mothra. Also, let's notice a few things with Madison and Emma in this shot. Notice that it looks like there's large spider webs right here as she touches Mothra's larval form. We also see a lot of what appears to be spider webs over here. That is most likely silk, as Mothra is known to use silk when defeating her enemies. Also notice the closer look we see of the statue over here. It appears there's a belt of some kind right here as well as uh, pant legs. So Mothra is clearly a creature that has been worshipped for a long time. Okay, so here we see Godzilla coming out of the water. There's a submarine here. It's a beautiful shot. I just want to play it in full because the music is so great. Claire de Lune. Zhang Ziyi. Uh, love that scene. It gives me chills every time. 
Interestingly, this is cut to make it look as though Zhang Zi and others are looking upon Godzilla for the first time, but they are not. Notice the tents in the background as Godzilla rises from the water. I love that shot of Godzilla using his atomic breath, just to, you know, show off. But you can see the submarine down here does not appear to have any tents on it, just looks like a submarine. But in the next shot, we do see tents and bunkers set up what, on what appears to be a waterfall uh, where Mothra is spreading her wings for the first time. So clearly Mothra and her cocoon were hibernating beneath a waterfall in a cave somewhere, which is, you know, it's actually kind of cool. I love this shot of the bioluminescent wings that we see here, um, and you can actually see Mothra's uh, smaller wings unfold as well. Sorry about the rain, guys. It's it's really storming outside. Kinky Dora, leave us alone. All right, so this is the waterfall that Mothra is hanging out inside of, hibernating. I looked everywhere for this waterfall. Um, it appears to be in China. At Monarch Outpost 61 in the Yunnan Rainforest. We'll go ahead and look through Mothra's case files at this point. But I looked everywhere for the waterfall in question, and I believe it is the Julong waterfall. Obviously, they made it look a little bit bigger with movie magic, as well as the water swells a little bit further and more uh, vigorously. But that may be the maybe just a case of like it raining a lot on that day. I don't know. Mothra, or Titanus Masura, which is a uh, nod to the Mothra fairies and their catchy song. Mothra, yeah. Which is a nod to the uh, Mothra fairies that would summon Mothra. Uh, they called her Masura. The body of Mothra is only about 52 feet, but the wingspan is literally 16 times that amount. From a race Nazca lines to the hidden temple of the moth, the name Mothra is woven throughout the most secret mythologies of our planet. The folklore and fairy tales tell of a winged creature of blinding light, an angel of the clouds whose godlike luminescence has the power to shatter the sky. Ancient spirit tablets discovered in the mountain jungles of the Yunnan province portray a giant winged alpha of the Lepidoptera order. In all of our findings, human civilization is pictographically shown in poses that imply deification of the so-called queen of the monsters, suggesting the creature was once a benign part of the natural order. When Monarch containment crews discovered the live titan chrysalis within the Chinese myth site, Dr. Emma Russell was quickly dispatched to closely monitor the creature that lay dormant within it. A quickening sonar pulse suggests the creature is awakening. If she ever emerges from her ancient slumber, a superspecies that once illuminated the sky will be reborn as Mothra. Pupil DNA samples suggest a remarkable multi-stage evolution. On reaching adulthood, Mothra's gigantic thorax is capable of emitting beta wave bioluminescence, which can be projected through the intricate patterns on its wings and weaponized into blinding god rays. As one of the deadliest and most beautiful natural phenomena in Earth's history, no wonder this devastating guardian angel was worshipped as a goddess by the ancient human civilizations blessed to witness her. The landscape around here actually does look like the Julong uh, waterfall, even though the waterfall itself appears to be much larger than an actual person. Alright, so here we have an earlier shot in the film of Emma and Madison looking upon the Mothra cocoon. Madison appears to be touching, perhaps even communicating. I don't know, this is speculation territory. Will she be replacing the Mothra fairies? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But like we read just now, Dr. Emma Russell is looking at the sonar pulse of Mothra potentially waking up. And it, it looks like she's pressing a button that explodes this facility. I do not believe these are linked. I think that's just editing, making it look like these two, uh, this is a cause and effect situation. But I do believe that this shot is in Mothra's cave. Here we have a volcano which appears to be overlooking Mexico City. The volcano in question is probably Popocatépetl, uh, but what's weird about it is that they appear to have uh, put a facility on top 
of the volcano to stop it from erupting. I don't know that that's going to work. Obviously, it doesn't because in the next shot it explodes. But it is an interesting idea of like putting this government facility over this thing to protect the individuals below. This is clearly where Rodan rises. Notice that it appears to be fire or magma appears to be flicking off it. We don't know what it is at this point, but the landscape around here is very interesting. So apparently Monarch Outpost 56 is on Isla de Mona, Mexico, which is an island supposedly off the coast of Mexico. This is not true. Popocatepetl is in Mexico City, or overlooking Mexico City, rather. And Isla de Mona is actually an island in Puerto Rico, right over here. So I, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they just made a huge mistake. Most likely they didn't. But yes, this is indeed where Titanus Rodan is uh, going to erupt from. We see more of his volcano activity, uh, the cave that he resides in later in the trailer, but let's go into his specs. His wingspan's a little bit larger than Mothra's at 871 feet, and the body height is obviously three times the size of Mothra's, but um, it's a different type of monster altogether. Within a monarch containment facility atop the active Isla de Mona volcano, a mysterious titan lies in pyrostasis within the restless magma. The legends speak of it as the fire demon or the one born of fire, but a simpler name echoes through the ancient temples of volcanically active regions, Rodan. Rodan being one of the very classic Toho creatures that made it into their kaiju universe. A volcanic internal combustion system of magma flows throughout a body covered in rock-like scales that act as a geothermal armor. While much larger in size, Rodan has a skeletal structure similar to that of a pteranodon, one of the earliest vertebrates known to have developed the power of flight. Just as Kong is king of the primates, Rodan may have once been king of the skies. Because of the extreme temperatures within this particular containment facility, current lab equipment can't function properly. As a result, thermal heat signatures on the creature are impossible to collect, and Monarch detection crews conducted cardiograms via aerial satellite for life sign detection and verification. Much like the volcano that incubates it, Rodan is alive, but dormant. Rodan's wings are wrapped around its body in stasis, but our cryptos estimate a wingspan big enough to create a sonic thunderclap capable of leveling entire cities as it flies overhead. RF capture scans reveal that Rodan's skin is not made of rock, but does have an outer dermis of sharp volcanic sediment collected from centuries of dormancy. PSYOPs theorizes the vulcanized appearance of its skin may be an evolutionary trait developed as a form of camouflage against mountain or large rock formations. Truly, a titan forged by fire. Alright, so even though in this it said that its wings are wrapped, I don't know why they have this image here, but uh, apparently his wings were spread out when they took this image. Notice in the legend down here of the heat signature uh, on this thermal map, the inside of Rodan actually appears to be warmer than the outside, even though he's literally lying in a lake of lava. Now, we cannot yet go and check out any of these other monarch outposts, we do know that the Monarch Outpost in Antarctica is 32, the Isla de Mona Mexico Outpost is 56, and the Yunnan Rainforest Outpost is 61. So there are plenty out there. There are only 20 appearing on this map, so uh, probably more will be discovered as Godzilla... Where is that man? Where's that little monster? As Godzilla finds his way. To them. This isn't the first time that this universe is creating fictional places, obviously. Skull Island is not a real place, as well as the Japanese city in the first film. Here's an interesting shot of Millie Bobby Brown's character, Madison, placing some sort of book or hard drive. We don't really know what it is. We know that it glows later on in this trailer. She places it down on this table. It is some sort of, I think it's some sort of communication device, maybe with Godzilla. Clearly, she is going to be the, the main protagonist in this film based on all the action that she's given. We see Rodan here flying over Mexico City, and we see that uh, thunderclap-type sonic boom that just engulfs the city as the shadow travels over. It's extremely massive, it's very cool, uh, and it's terrifying at the same time. All right, so here we have Millie Bobby Brown's character, Madison, again. Notice that she's carrying a book that appears to be lighting up blue, and also we have that yellow lightning again, arcing behind her. Boom. Definitely Kinky Dora. And this appears to be at the baseball 
uh, Stadium, Fenway Park in Boston, Massachusetts. We can tell that by the pictures and you just, you know, you make the connection. But you see that arc, then you see another boom right there, and then another boom. So clearly that is all three heads trying to attack Millie Bobby Brown's character. For whatever reason, it is likely that book-shaped thing that's glowing in her arms. I think it is in some way, shape, or form to call for Godzilla. I have a feeling that this scene, this scene in Boston, will be very near the end. Because, well, we'll talk about it later. This also proves that there, are, there is a significant amount of the film being taking place in Boston, as this is a Boston fallout shelter being rammed through. Here we have Outpost 32 again. Uh, looks like someone has come through and shot a bunch of people uh, or tranquilized them. We don't know who potentially could have done this. My bets are on Dr. Emma Russell, as later on in the trailer, Millie Bobby Brown's character says, you're a monster, and she apologizes in some form or fashion. Uh, I have a feeling she's some sort of crazy scientist who wants to bring back all these titans just because it's the right thing to do in her mind. And she unleashes Kinky Dora on the world. Now, notice the 31 here. I wonder if this is some sort of uh, microphone here, and this is Outpost 31 that she's hiding out in. We see another character here. Um, I have a feeling that he potentially died in that attack in San Francisco a few years back, but we do know that they live in Boston. It's the Red Sox fans. This also appears to be Fenway Park Stadium uh, with the yellow lightning. You can see some of the signs like this infinity sign as well as the lights over here in the distance. So Millie Bobby Brown is yelling, something she's very used to. Uh, I mean, any, any fan of Stranger Things has seen her screaming her head off as, you know, something is in her head or something. Clearly, Kinky Dora is coming for her. You can see that yellow light again against the blue. Notice the colors in this trailer, very blue and very yellow, very strikingly different um, primary colors. All right, so this is uh, most likely the volcano, uh, which I'm assuming is Popocatepetl, but is on Isla de Mona in Mexico. So it's all, a bit, uh, it's all a bit shady, but this is a temple that appears to be for Rodan. We see a little bit more about this later as uh, Ken Watanabe's character, Ishiro uh, Serizawa, walks through it. But this appears to be Rodan waking up. Boom. Just destroys this temple. So here we have the US Capitol, Washington DC, under fire. Uh, it's, it's destroyed. There, there are ships on land. There are multiple tornadoes. I count one, two, three, four, five, six. At the very least, we see Rodan. Notice Rodan, actually, for a second. Notice these fireballs coming out of the sky. I have a feeling Rodan is capable of uh, shooting fireballs. Notice this fireball materializes right here, just under Rodan's flight. Also notice in this scene, a little bit further, also notice in this scene, just behind Rodan in the clouds, you can see a wing move slightly, but only a silhouette. Now that was put there on purpose. That is definitely King Ghidorah. You can tell this for a number of reasons by looking at the gunfire. We see some of it is aimed at Rodan, we see some of it is aimed here at these clouds, obviously, and some of it over here. We don't know what is going on over here, but it's very clear that Kinky Dora is over there in the clouds. So I, I want you guys to take a quick notice of the creature outside the window. Notice there's an eye right here. There's a larger eye or a more front and center eye right here. And then there appears to be one right here as well. Notice as the frame moves, the head in the front appears to be moving at different speeds than the heads the other eyes are attached to, and each appears to be moving in a different direction. This is King Ghidorah. Subscribe for King Ghidorah. For whatever reason, King Ghidorah really wants to find and potentially destroy Madison Russell. For whatever reason, I don't know. Um, maybe it's because she has that, like, maybe psychic connection to Mothra. Maybe because she called Godzilla. I don't know. There's a bunch of speculation here that I'm, like, proposing, but... 
um, it's very clear to me that whatever she has, that that uh, book or hard drive thing that glows, maybe it's a transmitter of some sort, whatever that is, Kinky Dora really does not like it. Here we have Zhang Ziyi. Here we have O'Shea Jackson Jr. as Barnes. This appears to be in Outpost 32, just after uh, they find those dead bodies outside. Um, I have a feeling this is the same scene. Okay, look at the scales or rock-like formations on the skin of Rodan. This is very clearly Rodan because of the beak here, but uh, still very cool. Also, notice the fire on the tips of the wings of Rodan. It, it looks almost like, you, like you're shooting down an airplane and it's on fire, but this appears to be emanating from inside Rodan, which you know correlates to what we already learned earlier from the Monarch Scientist website. So, okay, Kinky Dora, in all his or her glory, notice that there appear to be five glowing lights on what appears to be a belly button. I'm just going to call it a belly button. But when the lightning appears behind Kinky Dora, it gets yellow. It's really interesting. Uh, I, I don't know what this is. And then Charles dances. King. Great line. Thanks, Tywin. Uh, Rodan looks really... Uh, I think Rodan looks unfinished here. The CGI does not look... Uh, it looks kind of weird. Nightmarish. Oh, that's cool. Notice the uh, the fire that gets spit out of the wings. Alright, so this appears to be Ken Watanabe's Dr. Ishiro Sirizawa at what appears to be Rodan's Temple of Doom uh, and Gloom. It appears that it's showing a little more activity than normal, which is probably why he's there. And... It looks as though he's just realizing now that Rodan is waking up, finally, for whatever reason. Oh, this is a beautiful shot of what appears to be Mothra. Uh, it definitely is Mothra because we uh, learned earlier that she has the ability to create what's called God Rays, which is like an exceptionally bright bioluminescent light that can be used to, uh, to be weaponized almost, which is very cool and very, you know, it's just beautiful all around. Such like a clean white. I love that. All right, so this is interesting. It appears that Madison is in the stadium, the Fenway Park Stadium, and she's smiling. For whatever reason, maybe the uh, SOS call that she called out to Godzilla or someone finally went through, and it looks as though she is smiling at... Godzilla himself, King of the Monsters. And honestly, what an apt title for this film. Uh, what a beautiful trailer. It's one of the most beautiful trailers I've experienced, I think, in my entire life. Like, every time I watch this, I'm just stunned at how beautiful everything looks. And still got plenty of time to finish whatever CGI is unfinished and, um, you know, work out everything so that this is the, like, the best movie it can be. But notice the... Yellow lightning in the background. This is also in Boston, obviously. And um, also notice that the fighter jets appear to be uh, flying with Godzilla, not against him. So clearly they're going against Kinky Dora. What do you guys think of this trailer breakdown? Did we catch anything that you didn't part particularly catch? Are you looking forward to Godzilla King of the Monsters or are you more looking forward to the next film in the MonsterVerse Kong vs. Godzilla? We'd love to know your thoughts. Please share them down below. For the first 48 hours of this video's being up, we plan to respond to every single one of you guys, so and, and hopefully everyone after that point, if we can get around to it. But definitely the first 48 hours. So thank you all for watching up to this point. Uh, we really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a like. It really does help us out. Uh, and let us know your thoughts, because we'd love to hear them. As well as uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this, especially the breakdowns, because we love doing them. And we really put a lot into them. But if you want to see more videos like it, and you're not sure if you want to subscribe, you can head over here and check out some of our other videos. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.